Hello friends, today we will discuss one more topic, it's called rotor earth hole protection of generators. Before we go details discussion regarding the principle of operations, what are the different make of relay we are using, uh, we will discuss this one by one, that is Woodward XR1, in our side we are using this one, CNS make MRR1 also one model is there, ABB also REK510 that model also there. Siemens Ciprotec 7UM62 also inbuilt protection is there. It requires a coupling device 7X R81 module. Internally it has 7X R61 module which used for the voltage injection principle whereas 7X T71 module is there that uses square of injection principles. So before just a brief of excitation system, one is called a static excitation system one is called as brossless excitation system. This is the arrangement for the static uh, excitation system where carbon brosses are used to feed the supply to the field windings. Brossless excitation systems, PMG is used. Now the EMF will be induced here. This AC supply will given to the ABR. ABR internally will convert to DC supply and it will give the AC exciter field supply. Now the EMF induced in the armature Again the AC generation will be there that will be converted into DC by using the rotary uh, rectifier assembly. Uh, after that it is going to the generator main field that is the rotor winding. Now EMF is induced and the output will be generated. Then ABR take the feedback of the voltage and current generated accordingly it will regulate the voltage or the excitation system. This is the brossless excitation system. There are two methods uh, generally used to detect the rotor earth fault protections. Uh, first one is called the DC injection methods. This is the arrangements. Here this is the module. This will inject the DC supply, low voltage DC supply to the rotor winding. Here it consists of over current relay, one current limiting resistor and this is AC to DC conversion rectifier assembly will be there. So this low voltage DC is injected to this main field or the rotor winding and there is the rotor body also grounded and this one terminal also grounded here, this is injection module. So both are having the common grounding path. During normal operations as the rotor winding also insulation is there, so that insulation and the body is grounded so there is formation of a ground capacitance will be there. So initially very low current it will take for the charging, capacitors act like an open circuit so there is no flow of current through this path. So normal whatever leakage current will be there that is the charging current or the small leakage current that will flow through this path. This current is lesser than the setting current of this over current relay. So whenever there is a fault one resistance path will be created and now this current will start flowing through this path. Now as the fault current is more than the setting current then the relay will operate. Once the relay operated it will isolate the generator. This is the magnetic this path, this is the starter winding, this is the rotor shaft, the outer part of the rotor shaft is grounded through carbon process. And this is the, this is the actually D side and this is the ND side. Here turbine will be coupling will be there, this side only. Now this is the ND side where exciter will be there, this part is the exciter and after exciter one PMG will be there, this is the brossless excitation system. At the extreme end of the PMG you will find the slip ring will be there, through this carbon process we are utilizing for injection of square F injection voltage to this rotor winding. This is XR1. And this U1 terminal is connecting through this slip ring with carbon process to this side of the rotor. This will fit to the rotor windings. So this will inject the square F voltage to the rotor winding. And one more U2 terminal will be there in the relay. That will take the parallel tapping or the same path through this feedback path. If this is the rotor winding and this is the outer portion of the rotor which is also grounded. Now this ground also one feedback will be taken to this uh, relay. Normal operation time 
this insulation and as the rotor body is also grounding one capacitance formation will be there this is called as ground capacitance when there is a fault or the insulation failure means automatically the fault current will start flowing through this to the rotor body as the rotor body is grounded now it will be grounded and also it will give a feedback to the relay now this is the closed path here it is injection time injection site and this is the feedback taking site so it will compare and it will measure, keep on measuring the insulation resistance of the rotor one more commonly used principle of detecting rotor art fault is the square f injection methods in this type we are injecting low voltage square f voltage to the rotor winding and what about the leakage current or the fault current we are measuring in the measurement unit it consists of one coupling unit one measurement unit one injection module this coupling unit work is to protect the relay from any source voltage from the excitation system during the normal condition that uh, as the rotor body is grounded so this one capacitance will be formed this capacitance will take the charging current and it will stabilize it now whatever the leakage current it will detected in the measuring unit initially it will be very less current or the negligible current so the insulation resistance will be very high the basic principle of this method is to find the insulation resistance of the rotor so when there is a fault automatically current will start flowing from this path to the ground and we have taken a ground reference to this relay the relay also internally the measurement unit will detect the fault current now here rf the fault resistance will be formed and one resistance path will be created so totally how many resistance are there we can see one is called measurement resistance here the coupling resistance one is fault resistance here is the rg or it is called the winding resistance and one is called wear resistance as the relay we connected to this system is by wire so wear resistance also known to us so these are the resistance only fault resistance we have to find it out so this is the methods this is the injection voltage fault current rc by 2 as two resistance are connected in parallel so this is rc by 2 this is the generator field resistance rf we have to find it out and rw is the wear resistance that is also known to us rm is the measurement resistance that is also known to us so only rf is we have to find it out so this is the internal method to find the insulation resistance this is called as the square f injection principle this is the square f generally we are injecting to the rotor windings so here this is actually actually that we are injecting 24 volt plus or minus and 1 hertz frequency so here to here is one cycle so this is one second so half of this one is 500 milliseconds in every 500 millisecond it will keep on changing the uh, sign so this is a normal time when that uh, insulation resistance is very high now this is the charging time the actually there is a ground capacitance initially it will take the charging current it will be zero again the negative cycle it will again charging it will take and it will be zero and this is the actually that resistance we are going to measure that is within normal range but when there is an initial alarming fault will be there this charging current now it will not be zero in the next cycle also it will not be zero so it will keep measuring this current so current will be reflected in the waveform now this is the alarming level but whenever there is a severe fall or non-symmetrical fault this will be shifted towards more positive side and it will not be zero at all now you can see it is now shifting towards the more positive directions so more current will be reflected here it is the fault level now whenever this insulation resistance is r is less than 20 kilo ohm and a delay of 5 seconds this is the 
all round and if r less than less than 5 kilo ohm with a delay of 4 seconds then this is the trip and uh, in the relay there will be a no contact will be taken when that is 11 and 14 and it will be NC during alarm and uh, one more NO contact is there that is 21, 24 that will become NC during trip. Rotor ground capacitance generally in the range of 0 0.1 micro Faraday, 1.5 micro Faraday. CE is called as ground capacitance, it will be 3 micro Faraday. So this insulation resistance, these are the settings. One is alarm setting, one is trip setting. This is the generator. This is the D side of the generators and uh, it is coupled with the turbine. So this is the outer part of the rotor. So you will find one carbon brush here. And this is the ND side. Here also you will find this exciter and PMG will be there. Extreme end side you will find the slip ring with carbon brush for this rotor art for productions. We will look close into this carbon brush. Here you can see this is the outer part of the rotor or the outer portion of the rotor where carbon brush is fixed and this is grounded this is grounding huh? and here the grounding is there this grounding also feedback taken this cable feedback taken to the rotor earth fold relay XR1 this is the U2 terminal this is the exciter and uh, this is the PMG after PMG slip ring will be there here inside carbon brush will come so this is the arrangement for rotor art fault protection carbon brushes this is the Woodward XR1 rotor art fault protection relay it has an auxiliary supply of 36 to 275 YC and 19 to 390 volt DC and it has a measuring range of 0 to 140 kilo ohms here A1 and A2 we are giving the auxiliary supply and this is the alarm setting this is the trip setting presently we are keeping like 20 kilo ohms this is the time delay so it is the 5 seconds we have kept tripping will be lesser uh, insulation resistance so it will be 5 kilo ohm and the delay is 4 seconds we have kept suppose this middle one uh, adjustment is like suppose somebody want to keep it like 20 plus 8 suppose 28 kilo ohms then here 20 and here we can adjust it to 8 so it will be 28 kilo ohms so this is the alarm and this is the trip these dip switches are to block the alarm or trip if required we can block it this uh, trip or alarm and uh, 11 no contact for alarm and 21 24 for the no contact for tripping and here one important point is e1 and u2 here so the 24 volt dc 1 hertz frequency actually generated from here and this side it will enter through that slip ring from the nd side of the rotor to the rotor winding and this one is u2 terminal it will take feedback from the uh, ground reference so this is the u1 and u2 so we'll give a supply and check now we, we have given the supply to this relay so points where 24 volt will be generated now we can see here 23.3 volt dc volt is generated here so this is going to the rotor e1 terminal and the outer grounding reference it will take or it will connected it will be connected to the u2 terminals and this uh, i put at the multimeter in continuity mode and this uh, 11 14 is the alarm no this is no now and the 21 and 24 this is the trip no now suppose this test bottom is there if i press it for three seconds and more 
automatically it will act you can see now it is coming as nc and 21 24 also it will come nc once i release it it will be again no so this is the function of rotor arc fault relay woodward xr1 so we have arranged this uh, one experiment here so you assume that this is the rotor of a generator this side is that slip ring will be there so here carbon process will be connected one we connected here and the other end shaft end also one carbon process will be there this is we assume that this is the shaft side or the outer portion of the rotor this is the connection this will be grounded in the practically this will be grounded and the ground terminal also taken to this relay feedback u2 terminal and u1 will be yeah this is the u2 this is u1 u1 will be connected through slip ring to this uh, outer and the outer side shaft also grounding will be there through this carbon brass good so you can see this is the alarm 11 14 so it will be no only and 21 24 that is the trip that is also no now so once we create a fault here so that means here we can see this is the rotor normal time this will be grounded so from the rotor phase to this ground one capacitance formation will be there as i explained in the theoretical part that uh, yeah. but when there is a fault actually it will fault resistance will be created so through resistance the current will start flowing from this rotor to the rotor body and this rotor body will be conducting through this carbon brush it will be collected and given feedback to the relay so i'll create a fault here just i am touching this rotor body and this carbon brush you can see the now the touch the continuity probe we check it once now you see that yeah. now the trip contact is there alarm also there if i remove it automatically it will reset there is a fault in the rotor winding it will come in contact with this or the insulation failure means this will come in contact with the rotor body and rotor body this uh, leakage current or the fault current will flow through this carbon brush to this u-tube terminals and internally it will calculate the rotor resistance or the insulation resistance where well, this rotor body is now sorted somewhere internally the relay will act and after certain delay only it will constantly hold by that time multimeter will show the continuity is there the no contact will come to nc these are the carbon brushes utilized for the rotor earth fault protections uh, after using few years you can see this will be uh, reducing its original size eh, due to worn out the rubbing of that carbon brush this is the original one once it is reduced to 50 percent we have to replace with the new one you can see so these are the carbon brushes utilized for the rotor fault protections Thank mm -hmm. you.